So beef producers in Oklahoma, uh, there's an increased interest in direct marketing beef to consumers in Oklahoma. And it's not a new concept, but it's highly popular right now. I think what producers need to be aware of first and foremost is scheduling. Uh, I'm hearing discussions among processors that they are scheduled out easily 12 months. So May of 2021 is when they're scheduling livestock. In many instances, dates are being secured even before a calf is born, perhaps. That's how uh, frantic it's gotten in the industry. So producers need to understand that uh, the processing sector is kind of uh, bottlenecked. There's not a lot of capacity in scheduling and getting your animals into those processors could be difficult right now. We've got a tech bulletin that's published out there that gives a quick summary of three basic categories of processors. So a producer who wants to direct market meat needs to know uh, with confidence, one, who their customer is, where it will be distributed, how it will be sold, because that has a direct impact on which category of processor you want to choose. The three main categories are based upon their inspection status. Products that come out of a federal establishment can be sold into commerce anywhere in the world, essentially. Those products which come out of a state inspected establishment in Oklahoma can only be sold into commerce within the boundaries of Oklahoma. Products out of a custom exempt establishment, the meat products are prohibited from being sold and they are clearly labeled not for sale. And the purpose of that, the intent of that is uh, the custom exempt processor really just provides a processing service to people who have an animal and want to have that animal slaughtered and processed and take the meat back home to their household. Custom exempt processors are not intended to produce meat products that will be sold into commerce. To, to emphasize, if someone wants to get involved in direct marketing, they need to at least have an understanding of who and where their consumer is, where they're located, and how they'll get the product to them. And then, of course, one of the basic fundamentals is what does my, cons what does my customer want? What do they want to buy from me? I have an animal that produces upwards of 60 plus different possible beef cuts. Can I sell all of that to my customer? So there's a lot of questions that people need to consider uh, when jumping into the direct marketing realm. There's the concept of aging. Many producers would like their carcasses to go through the aging process, which is a, a, essentially a tenderization process. How long is that aging period? Do we age carcasses or do we age certain cuts? And there's a whole, uh, whole realm of science behind aging uh, that could possibly be discussed. Uh, the type of packaging. Uh, different processors offer different packaging arrays. That should be understood. Uh, is the product frozen or is it maintained at refrigeration once it's finished? That should be discussed. And then uh, retrieval. Uh, one of the biggest headaches for processors is when people don't come and retrieve the meat because freezer space starts getting to be crowded and they need to keep moving product on through. And so understanding the agreement about product retrieval is important as well. So when these animals are slaughtered, of course you go through the slaughter process and make the animal dead and all the things come off of it. What remains, that chilled carcass, uh, that's the, the weight of that expressed as a percentage of the live weight is the dressing percentage. Typical fed steers and heifers are going to have a dressing percentage somewhere from a wide range would be 59% up to 64-65%. And that number is impacted by uh, the, the size of the animal, the type of animal, if it has horns or not, uh, body fill, organ fill, uh, how much you had to drink, all of those things impact weights. Uh, but a good range is 59 to 64 percent dressing percentage. So then uh, when you convert that carcass into cuts, there's additional weight loss. And you're talking a retail yield in the, again, somewhere in the a wide range would be 50 to 70 percent, depending upon the criteria applied to the carcass and the cuts generated. So a, a good rule of thumb is 60-60. You know, 60 percent dressed and 60 percent retail yield. And uh, that'll get you close to a final product yield from a live animal. If a, if a producer wants to engage in direct marketing, there are uh, a, a few state level uh, permits, if you will, that need to be secured. If I take possession of that meat and bring it to a location other than the processing establishment, 
then the local or county health department has some authority on how I do that. And it has to do with temperature control and storage. And so I would encourage beef producers who are going to direct market is to get uh, in contact with your county health department and ask what local county provisions or requirements exist for doing that. The second one is at a state level. Uh, if you're going to hold meat and then distribute that across the state of Oklahoma, the State Department of Agriculture, uh, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry requires that you obtain a certificate of warehouse or distribution. It's a no fee permit, there's no cost to it. You just have to register with the state and say, I'm going to take possession of meat that's going to be traded in commerce. So I'm going to hold meat, I'm going to be a warehouse, and I'm a distributor because I'm going to distribute meat. We've got information, uh, a fact sheet on direct marketing in Oklahoma and the regulations that apply to that. And then I've got another tech bulletin uh, about to be published that talk about what types of conversation a producer and a processor should have when they schedule for processing. It's, it's brand new, but we're, we're pushing it through quick.